Hey guys, it's Mike Cricket 113. Uh, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about um, the antennas that come with bell things. Now, uh, so over here, you know, we got my uh, bell thing BF F8 HP. Uh, this was my first HT, or is my first HD, let's put it that way, I have one on the, on the way. And uh, it's the, uh, supposedly the 8 watt radio. Uh, it's not entirely true. Um, I tested it with a uh, VHF, UHF, uh, SWR, and a uh, power meter at my buddy's house. And uh, it does close to that, so a little bit more than 5 watts on... Uh, UHF has a little bit more swing. It went to like 7.2. Uh, and VHF, it was about 6.5. So, not exactly 8 full board all the way. But, uh, it does alright. It does alright. Can't complain too much, you know. But anyway, I got this one shipped out of Canada. So, uh, it was nice on that respect. But anyway, what I wanted to talk to you about is the antennas. It comes with the little rubber ducky antenna. Alright, this thing is about... I don't have a rule around me, but I'm going to guess, uh, uh, eight in, yeah, probably like six and a half, seven inches long, rubber ducky, uh, very, uh, flexible, very small, so it works, um, you're not going to have the best signal in the world, uh, going out on your transmit, but if you are working simplex or something with, uh, some friends, maybe you're at a, uh, a ham convention, or uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, some kind of a rally, or, you know, hiking or whatever, it, it will work, it will work, uh, and it's uh, small and convenient, so when you put it on your belt, uh, you don't have this uh, big, bigger antenna uh, whipping all around and getting caught in things, so it works, and I used it for a long time until I upgraded um, for some repeaters that are kind of further away from me, I was, uh, getting complaints saying that it wasn't coming into the machine very well. So, uh, there's pluses and minuses with everything. I'm not going to say these, these little, uh, stock rubber ducks are terrible. Uh, some people will say that maybe because of audio quality, uh, you know, going into a machine, meaning uh, a repeater, but they do work and they do have a practical, uh, use for them like the one i just mentioned so anyway my good friend of mine he uh he had this antenna that i i just wanted to get it's a nagoya it's a nagoya there's the, the box so um, you know let me just put my fingers in the picture all the time this is really funny um so it's <laughs> it's a nagoya na 24j um this is a true nagoya it's not a knockoff uh, let's see here. So it does, uh, let's see here. This is a, okay, so it's a quarter wave. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in. It's a quarter wave. Talk about glare. On, uh, two meter. See that? 144. And a five eighths wave on, uh, 440, 430 megahertz. That's saying there. And it does receive only on all those other frequencies. It could power rating up to 20 watts, 50 ohm uh, impedance, and it's an SMA female. All right, guys, when you are when you get your bow thing, which most of you are gonna get, when you're gonna upgrade the antenna, make sure you get the SMA female. Now, most, uh, most of all the bow things are the female connector. That's the one you want. So let me pull that off. You look at one-handed skills there. Can you see that little hole in there? Female, okay? So you wanna get that, because there's your male side, there's your male connector. So, but if you get like other radios, like ICOMs or um, Yesus, I am, think, I'm pretty sure somebody can uh, make a comment that they are uh, male connections. But anyway, so let me put this over here. I wanted to upgrade to the NA24J. Why did I wanna do that? Okay, get back to your duck. See how thick this is? Pretty sturdy, rigid. I know it's flexible, like I said, but it's pretty sturdy. And I like 
I like having, let me zoom back here. Whoa. I like having, uh, I like having this on me whenever I'm out in the yard or, you know, when I go mobile and I'm like getting out of the car, going into a store or whatever, I have this thing in my back pocket, usually on my local repeater. And, uh, you know, if somebody calls, you know, I'm in the store, I, I can answer. If I can't answer, I can listen. So I usually have it on me. So this, and I wanted to be able to hit other machines that are further away without having this compromised antenna. That's kind of like a walkie talkie antenna, if you think about it. Uh, so I wanted to get my signal out and I wanted to receive a little bit better. So the N NA24J, there's my finger again, is right here. Now this guy, is my go-to, my only, my one I use all the time. You see how whippy that is and flexible? It's a lot longer. It's a lot longer. It's about, uh, I can't remember exactly. I think it's like 15 or 16 inches long. Uh, but, or 16 and a half, I can't remember. But this one, this is a great, I recommend this. This is a true Nagoya uh, NA24J. Uh, there are knockoffs, so you got to watch. The the true Nagoyas are going to have the silver printing on it. Whoops, can we see that? Yeah, the true Nagoyas are going to have the silver printing, not the blue. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So this guy here is great. It's very flexible, very whippy. Uh, sometimes I think there's a bug on my back of my arm when I have it on the, in my back pocket. You know, it was, I scared my wife one time uh, when she thought she had a bug in her. But, uh... I love this little antenna only because it's so flexible and it's light. It's very light. So I'm going to put this back on the HT here. At least try to anyway. One handed. I got to get myself a, uh, I'm going to keep using this phone, which is, as you guys can tell, because I'm always getting my finger involved into the uh, picture. I need to get a, uh, some kind of, holder or something retrofit something so i could use two hands but anyway screwed that on and now we have this and what's great about it and this is i'm sitting on the floor right now as you can tell it stands up on the desk or on your desk on your and it's light it's very whippy and it's light, so that makes it uh, a lot easier. Now this is going to improve your gain. It's going to improve your your uh, receive, and uh, we'll lay this down. It's going to improve your receive <coughs> and your transmit. Uh, look how much difference! I'm going to try to line this up. If you would imagine, whoops. Let's see here. There we go. You see the difference there? Look at that. That's like almost. Double and an eighth, you know? So, yeah, this, those, any upgrade. Now, there's all sorts of antennas up there. Obviously, I have Nagoya's um, only because that's what I was inter introduced to via a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, this is what I'm using right now. Uh, but, but, there is another one. And we'll take this out of the picture here. And we'll put that over there. There is another one. So I'll get the box a little sleeve for it. And it's a little bent up, it's just my nut. Is the NA771. This this is another Nagoya antenna. Um, let's see if we can zoom in here. It's a uh, quarter wave on uh, two meter. And now it's half wave on uh, 440. 10 watt rating. This is an SMA female. See how it looks like they have this uh, standard package, which is good, you know, reduced cost for having the same package. Uh, but they have different connectors, BNC, SMA male, SMA female. So that's good to know because the other package didn't show that. So I guess you could get, if you have like say a uh, Yesu or an Icom HT or another manufacturer, and you needed a BNC or an SMA male. It looks like the Nagoya NA771 may, uh, I'm not going to say that it is, but may have other connections. But I need the uh, female, as you know, for the, uh, for the uh, Balfang. Excuse me. Anyway, this antenna, get this out of the way. 
we'll leave it there. This antenna is right here. It's also a Trina Goya. You can see the difference there. Look at the wire difference. Okay. It's a little shorter, I think, than the uh, the other one. Well, you can take that off and find out. Zoom back. Uh, unzoom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> zoom and unzoom. Is there a retract? I don't know. What What's the word there? Anyway, let me try to line these up best I can here on the Pennsylvania. So yeah, the uh, the 24J is a little longer and thinner, obviously, and the uh, the 771, the Nogoya NA771, is a little thicker. But this is also a very good antenna. It's heavier. It's a lot heavier, actually, uh, by weight. Yeah, see, <laughs> it is uh, springier. I imagine they have the uh, the wire co coiled up in there, and that insulator there is. Uh, pretty heavy. I don't really use this one too much, uh, only because it, the weight of it, like I was telling you, uh, oops, the weight of it, oops, I gotta zoom for that, is, uh, when I go to stand it up on a desk at work or whatever, uh, can you see that? Yeah, there we go. Nagoya NA771. When I go to stand it up at work, uh, the HD has a tendency of falling over, um, just because this is so heavier. Um, it is flexible, as you can tell, um, and it does work great. I can't really say one way or the other whether I'm getting better, better into the machines or whatever, um, with it. I mean, I can say it's better than, here we go, there's size comparison there. Uh, I can say it's better than the, uh stock antenna that it comes with obviously but uh you know every an antenna that's out there you have to think about it. every antenna that's out there there's different compromises and there's different pluses and minuses uh so you need to get something that works for you and i'm just recommending these nagoyas here the uh the uh 24j na-24j the na771 oh no actually that's the stock antenna that comes with the uh the Baofeng radios, the UV5Rs will have them and all the other models for the most part. Um, so yeah, you need to get something that just works for you. So like I said, if you are if you need something more rugged, this is going to be your choice. You want something more flexible, there's your choice. Uh, you know, it, whatever works for you. But uh, I do want to say... If you're still watching, I know this is kind of a long video. If you're still watching, keep this around. Don't just throw it away, but you'll need to upgrade. You want to upgrade. If you want to, if you're going to have your HT for a while and you, and you know, we're all, we all are, uh, please upgrade your, uh, your antenna. You're going to get into the machines a lot better. Um, and, uh, when you're mobile or, uh, portable, let's say walking around, you want to have better receive, better transmit. And uh, ham radio will be a lot more fun. Um, it, sometimes, you know, it's not just the radio. People say, oh, well, this thing stinks or whatever because I can't get out or I can't get heard. You know, well, maybe it's your, uh, maybe it's your antenna, you know. So uh, try upgrading. Nagoya uh, makes good products and uh, they're pretty uh, inexpensive. And uh, it's worth the money. It's worth the money to upgrade your, your antenna system. Um, also, I would suggest, well, I would suggest getting a, uh, backup, backup radio. These, uh, this one here was like 68 bucks for some reason. I don't know why, but, uh, <laughs> you can get the UV5R. They're still making it. I think they're up to what generation now? Um, third, fourth, I don't know. Uh, but there's so many models from Baofeng and BTEC. There's so many models. But um, a UV5R, heck, I was on Amazon the other day. I, I saw that they had a couple for like $24. $24. Get yourself on the air. That's amazing. So people will knock these, but you know what? When you're starting out and money's tight, especially now in this economy, uh, you know, having a radio just to get on the air your first time, you know, uh, you know, 
you need something. You need something. You need something to get on the air and have fun with it, you know? And, and having these cheaper radios makes it fun because it's it's affordable. Um, what day is today? Sunday? So tomorrow... Tomorrow, I think, I have a... Uh, I bought another one of these, actually. Uh, I spent $33 on it. But I also got... And I'll be able to show you guys the new antenna. The new one. I got another Nagoya. But it's the uh, NA... 320N, I think. Um, <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow. <clears throat> and that's, I bought a tri, the tri-band version of the Baofeng. It's the, uh, this one here is the, uh, the BF F8HP. It's a dual band. It's uh, UHF, VHF. Let me just get the box here. Uh, AWAT radio. And, uh, but I bought, and it's coming here, another HT Baofeng. It's the uh, UV9S, which is the tri-band version. Now we're uh, we're technicians, so uh, that's one of the. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm getting old. <laughs> that's one of the uh, the bands allocations that uh, that we're allowed to use as a technician. It's the uh, 1.25 meter band. Uh, it's right in between. Uh, it's, it's VHF, but it's between two meter and seventy centimeter. It's a 220 band. Uh, 220 band seems like it's getting, uh, more popular. It's becoming your, uh, let's see here, your, uh, hipster kind of band. It's a little quiet. Uh, there are repeaters out there in your, in your state. Uh, you just gotta go find them, uh, on repeaterbook.com. You could program them into your radio, but I had no capabilities on 220. So, uh, I figured I'd get the HT and try it out. Um... You know, and with anything, you know, each band has its own uh, pluses and minuses. And I'm starting to learn them a little bit better. But uh, I just thought, you know, my local machine, AA3VI, uh, has, uh, has a 220 repeater. And it's linked up into the 440 side. And I've talked to gentlemen on, uh, on both uh, because they could be in on 220 and I could be in on the uh, 440 side. And... It's linked together, which is awesome. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, so I'm just going to try that out. We'll see how it is tomorrow. I'll be happy. And the point of that was having a backup radio. Having a backup radio. In case this one took a crap. And uh, what, what would I have? You know, nothing. So I figured I'd get myself uh, the upgrade uh, tri-bander. So I could have fun, some more fun with it, and then have it a, a backup. And then also, you know, also, you can, uh, you can always, you know, have it with you. You don't have to have it all put together, but you can have it with you in case uh, you need another one. Or you have another fr friend with you that's a ham that his, his or her radio takes a dive. And uh, you need to give them a replacement so to borrow. So anyway, uh, that's my video here. I know it's, uh, whoa, 18 minutes here. But I hope it was informative. Uh, let me put this over here. So I hope it was informative and helpful. And just explaining a little bit about reasons why you need to upgrade your uh, the antenna, the stock antenna that comes with your radio. Um, especially about thing. Um, so... This is Mike Cricket 113 and it's Sunday and I hope you guys enjoy enjoy the video. Please uh please subscribe if you can and uh if you want to anyway, please it helps me out and please hit that thumbs up button. Uh that helps out a lot, please. Um so yeah, I enjoyed making these videos for you guys if you're still listening and uh I really appreciate the subscribers. Thank you very much. And uh we'll keep making these videos for you. So this is Mike Cricket 113. And I'll be clear.